Good morning. It's Off the Press, the program where we review the newspapers, the national dailies, tell you more about it in the headlines and then make sense of it. This morning with me to do so in the studio is Tuboson Akeju again, a reputation manager. Yes, good morning. Uh, it's good to have you. You were with us in the news and this section is another one. Thank so, you uh, Always great to have you here and share your thoughts. So we're beginning this morning with the nation newspaper. It will be displayed on your screen uh, very shortly. And the big story there, as you would imagine, is um, anyway, from on the, the far top there is Unilag probes Randy lecturer, is putting uh, quotation marks there. Uh, church suspense down. With this picture there, the picture of Dr. Boniface. That story is on page nine, already displayed. And then Ogun raises one billion naira to fight insecurity. That's on page eight. Food prices up by 65% on border closure. And that's on page 12. Uh, you will scarcely see it, but it's on page 12. Uh, Eagles fighting spirit will trouble Brazil. That's on page 47. Uh, the Federal Executive Council okays 727 billion naira assembly increment. And that's on page 8. And we see Bielsa and Kogi 2019. We will win, says Dixon, as PDP begins campaign. PDP cautions Benlo, APC, against ethnic policies. Uh, politics rather, youth leaders from Southern Ijo support Diri. All of this and more you'll find on page 10 of the nation newspaper. And then way out of economic crisis by Dangote, Sanusi and others. And then we have uh, Atedo Salami Kuka Woshika list options. Buhari urges experts on homegrown solution. That story is displayed there. It's on the front page. Uh, you would see it. And then it's continued on page 7 of the nation newspaper. And uh, there's uh, another picture story here of a uh, a Lagos State Governor presenting a check to Divisional Police Officer of Ogudu Police Station, uh, Celestine, for rescuing some victims of armed robbery gang attack on, at Moshud Abiola Garden in Alausa. That's on Monday, yesterday. With them is Friday, who was shot by the robbers. Uh, that's unfortunate, uh, but thank God uh, they caught them. Uh, so that story is on page 34 of the nation's uh, newspaper. You can see the picture story uh, displayed there, but you will find the main story on page uh, 34. And then 9.6 billion dollar uh, judgment. CCB gets petition against XCJN Belgore. And that uh, story is there on the front page, but continued on page seven. And man steals baby as mom doses in Ogun. That's on page four. And then governors uh, fear to organize parties, says EFCC, on page 40. And that's what we've got on the nation. And behind the nation newspaper, of course, is the regular column uh, at home, abroad. Where are they now? Uh, that's uh, by Olatunji Dari. Uh, we'll find out what that is about. So, to us on this morning, what is catching your very own attention, as they say? <laughs> okay. We know the Unilag story is here. Oh, I think um, the Unilag story is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And like I as said, as expected. Yes, like I said on the news, it is very important for us to you know, see this particular episode to a logical conclusion mm -hmm. uh, because the issue of um, sexual harassment in our university has been there for God knows how long, um, even before I got into the university. I mean, that's also unfortunate. To very, very think unfortunate. Of it. So I think that this particular one that has gained even uh, international attention should be seen to a logical conclusion. There should be a process in place, like I said, the whistleblowing process, so to speak, that does, that deters the um, uh, uh, victimizations of victims, <laughs> allow me to say that, <laughs> obviously, you know, because that's the only reason people don't come out to say this thing. I mean, there are several cases where um, a student reports a lecturer of making um, on, um, advances that are not, um, you know, appropriate, inappropriate advances. And the next thing is that the old you know, it seems like all the lecturers then will now gang up against that student. So the average student will never come out and say that this is what has happened to me. Because they want to graduate. Yes, they want to exactly, leave Exactly, because the they school. have something at stake. So I think that's something we have to put a process in place. that it has, And at the same time, the lecturers have to be educated. Let's not assume that they know. Let's not assume that they know when they are crossing the red line. Because it is easier, you know, to stop people when it, it becomes very apparent that you're crossing the red line, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, I, I think that 
again, once we're able to do that, then we can now start to look at how you know the bill that you know the um, assembly yeah, passed can the be you know, yes you know if how how far can we even implement yeah but to know, before you get to that point clearly there's an issue of integrity here because even if you say they need to be educated to know when they are crossing the boundary it's obviously a case of integrity so, so don't, don't don't get don't get me wrong mm -hmm. educating them is not really because they don't know it's because you want to make it unequivocally clear mm -hmm. that just in just case so this, yeah. you don't know, you know, just in case the moment you start to make X, Y, Z statement, right, you have crossed the line. So mm -hmm. you yourself, you're judging yourself before anybody comes to judge you. And I think that because what happens is that it's just by human nature, they are going to avoid you know, going that route. Mm. And by avoiding going that route, the process of sexual mobility becomes a lot more difficult. At the same time, but the most important thing is one, we must see this to a logical condition. Two, mm -hmm. there has to be a kind of uh, whistleblowing policy and witness protection program mm. that has to be in place such that if anyone comes to make a report, there has to be guidelines anywhere in Nigeria to say that once a student is reporting the lecturer, step one, two, three, four, five has to be taken to either confirm that that has happened or to say that has not happened. Because you also don't want to have a situation where lecturers are now being blackmailed you know, mm -hmm. in this situation. And, and I'm not saying that that's what is happening, but the moment there's a system that is fair in place, you know, uh, prosecuting um, um, uh, people that cross the line will become easier. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's, that's my take um, on, on, on this. I mean, that's measure. quite unfortunate to say, because you would think that in such institutions, we shouldn't say these are people, I mean, in his case, for instance, he's not just a, a teacher, he's also a moral leader, so to speak, a church leader. He said he's a church leader, but a, I, say, a lead pastor. I, say, I say this all the time. His blood that is flowing through his vein. He's first man understand. before becoming a pastor. And pastor is it's just a title. It's got nothing to do with the makeup of that person. So the same bad behavior that exists in the average man exists in the pastor. It's just a bit of restraints that stops the pastor from exhibiting some of those you know, bad, bad behavior. So mm -hmm. I don't even think, to be very sincere, he's supposed to stand a higher moral ground. You know, and all of that. But the fact that as a lecturer you're making advances at a 17 year old is already a major, major red flag. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and all of that. Pastor or not, you know, it's, it's a very sad situation. It's, it's a very, very sad and, situation. And, you know, th there are already conversations saying that this is not, it's not just Unilag. There are, I mean, oh, it's everywhere. Different institutions it's in everywhere. Nigeria, and of course, Ghana, that was also yeah, featured. It's and, and it's quite unfortunate. Um, okay, moving forward. Um, what else um, do you like to respond to here? Way out of, I, 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 it's, um, you have to applaud the Nigeria Economic Summit Group mm -hmm. uh, for always putting together this platform that allows government and the private sector to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. While a lot of people will say that is too much of a talk shop in Nigeria, I think that you we have a multi-layered problem as a country, and these conversations will have to go on so long that the solutions to our problems, the understanding of our problem first of all, and the solutions to our problem we'll be becomes found everybody's knowledge so that it's not is no longer an issue of ignorance and mm -hmm. it's not longer a rocket science to say we've come to a common ground to say that we've properly outlined and dimensioned our pro problems and these are the solutions to it um and i'm glad that dangote is also you know even though um, from what i read it wasn't that the this particular i think it wasn't at this the event yesterday or there mm -hmm. about um it's good to know because it's a very um Dangote is, is a very strategic businessman in Nigeria. Businessman, I like 30%, about 30 percent of the Nigeria Stock Exchange, mm. the trading going there is is by this man, mm. is, or is by a company owned or where Dangote is involved. Him. So it's 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 actually even a risk. But let's not talk about that for a while. So if he has a suggestion, then. We need to pay attention. Listen, yeah. And are you excited that the president is attending for the first time? Yes, very, he's, uh, like election. I said, yeah, it's very, 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 very interesting to see that you know he's attending and at least will listen to some of uh, you know the problems and some of the solutions that has been preferred. So that he's also up to speed. Like I always say, mm. sometimes uh, you know there's always China, you know what they call the Chinese whispers. So yeah. if he doesn't attend, someone else is attending. 
the, 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 there's a filter that comes on that conversation, you know, um, um, and so it's very nice to see that the president is mm -hmm. attending and listening to some of this conversation by mm -hmm. himself. All right, what are your thoughts? The Federal Executive Council has okayed the 727 billion assembly increments. You see, we get to take a look at it. Well, we hear these figures all the time. It boils down to effective use yes. and implementation of this, and uh, some some um, non-profit organization, you know, are dedicated to you know following the implementation of these things. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we have to ensure that these figures are being properly, properly, you know, utilized. Um, utilized. For the National Assembly, is their budget is still a very, very sad bit. In a country that has been tagged the, um, um, the, the, the capital of poverty, poverty in world. the world, you know, uh, to see that some people are still feeling very, very fat. You know, and are doing not, okay, so to speak. Yes, and I'm not even ready, ready to budge to say, okay, all right, we're going, we're going to take a pay cut, mm -hmm. you know, to ensure that this money goes into X, Y, Z. You know, it's um, it's um, it's very sad. But and at the end of the day, in the same if, country that you're struggling to pay a minimum wage of thirty thousand. Well, the jury is the out on how appropriate. 30,000 minimum wage is yes, now, but even. like some of them have explained, the minimum wage is not across board. It's, you know, the 30,000 minimum wage is being implemented, is being focused on a particular low segment of the workforce, mm -hmm. which is a bit fair, but more importantly is to cut, because some of these budgets, when you ask people in that space of government, they are going to tell you that, oh, some of them are for constituency projects. It's not everything that goes into salary. But we know what that means. We know. Yeah. We know. All right. Uh, so we'll go to the Punch newspaper. Uh, and again, what we have, the big story there, I'll start from the big story there. It will be, it will be uh, displayed very soon. It's governors confirm crisis in APC, states threaten showdown. That's on page 11, uh, already displayed there. We are looking into chairman's uh, grievances. The national vice chairman is saying so. And then we have a picture story here, custom six vehicles uh, kills uh, Ogun students. Custom six vehicle kills Ogun students and injures others. That's on page 13. And then there's $11 million uh, fraud, court orders Invictus obese, 280 million naira forfeited. Uh, we remember him, and that story is on page 10. Uh, why I built church mosque at OOPL, says Obasanjo, that's on page 42. And uh, Akere Delu Sachs aid for congratulating Deputy Governor's wife. Oh, wow. That's on page 19. Uh, Unilag Foursquare suspend a senior lecturer over sex for admission video. That story, again, is on the Punch newspaper and is dedicated, two pages dedicated to it. So on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And Sonusi's problems arising from his unpopular opinions. That's according to Kuka, Matthew Kuka. And that's on page 26. And then top there, security beef up as Buhari presents budget today. Oh, it's happening today. Um, I think they said it's 12 p.m. or 2 p.m. Well, it will be happening today. <coughs> Excuse me. And that story, you find it on page 20. Customs continue raid, shot 272 car marts, and that's on page 30. And governors pull 100 vehicles for Southwest Security Patrol on page 20 uh, with a picture of... Uh, I carried a little there. And then LDR banks deposit with CBN shrinks by 68%. And that story you'll find on page 27. Um, OK, I guess uh, we'll go with the, f the screamer mm -hmm. on punch um, about the crisis in, in APC. APC. Excuse um, me. It's, it's uh, you know, I, 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 find it, I find it very um, disturbing that um, about just a year, not up to a year after, sorry, not up to a year mm -hmm. after election, we're starting to have like crisis in APC. And it's disturbing, but I'm not surprised. Because okay. what happened, if the makeup of APC were, is not because they had aligned ideologies mm -hmm. or anything. Everybody came together because they had a common enemy. And so I'm not totally surprised that they're having an issue. It's mm -hmm. disturbing because we are at a very crucial, crucial point. point as a country and a global economy. There's so much fear in the global economy that there's going to be a global recession mm. anytime soon. And that doesn't seem to be 
you know, the focus of the political elite. This crisis, they're saying, is stemming from the fact that the um, state chairman of the party think that the people that were loyal to the party have not been mm. rewarded, you know, by appointment. Um, from a political point of view, I think their grievance is quite valid mm. uh, because even in you know uh, um, other countries, you have to find a way to, to reward um, party yeah, loyalists. Definitely not at the expense of the people, right. but you have to find a way to reward them. So I think that the grievances, you know, they are valid, but I think there's a potential distraction mm. for the government. At, at a point this, like this. At a point like this, mm. and that is why, you know, I find it very funny. And it also seems that there seemed, is already starting to, you know, affect some states like, um, I think at those states, the election is coming very soon, mm -hmm. you know, and, and trust me, political um, problems like this in the ruling party can, you know, degenerate into, you know, serious issues mm. in the political space. I hope that they can nip the nip problem the in board. the board before, you know, it escalates beyond um, um, control. Mm -hmm. I think the other story there will be um, the, the, the deposit with CBN, you know, that sh shrinks versus um, yeah, the bank deposit to, to CBN. And they've attributed this to the um, um, deposit to um, lending ratio, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, the CBN has put out a directive to say that banks, you know, have to lend out more of, yeah. you know, their deposit to people. Um, I think that it's a step in the right direction from my little knowledge of the issue. At the same time, there has to be a complementary policy in place okay. to ensure that this lending does not go only to consumption, but it goes into productivity, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because the way our country is structured, we seem to have a culture of, you know, not being able to have delayed gratification. Mm. So the more disposable income we have, we just want to improve our you know, um, um, uh, our wealth, so to speak, or our living, almost immediately. And almost immediately. Um, the jury is out on why we're like that, and I was having a conversation with someone yesterday and said the reason why we're like that is that we don't have the basic minimum. Mm -hmm. So nobody is, there's no assurance of the basic minimum, so we're constantly fighting to get better, to get better, and all mm. of that. So uh, there's that struggle. Yes, that struggle. Mm. Because if a lot of this, I mean, some of these loans, while they are still not you know, uh, very friendly, but at least if they can help, you know, to stimulate the economy, then it will be good. If they all go into consumption, then we're going to have a problem again mm -hmm. because some of those loans will come back very bad and then it, is, it, it becomes a major risk for the banking sector, I think. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's a step in the right direction. I just really hope that it can be complemented to ensure that majority of the loan will go to productive, will go for productive use to generate more money mm -hmm. and just won't go into... Um, a lot of consumption. Properly harness, yeah. and we see return on investment. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that will be that. Um, security, oh, um, he's presenting the budgets. Is there any reason why there should be extra security? That's just me asking. I, 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 I don't know why there should be extra security, but I mean, mm. you don't know what the security report is also saying. We are not intelligence officers. Okay, so <laughs> please grab a copy of the Punch <laughs> newspaper and you find out all about that. It's on page 20 of the Punch newspaper. And again, the custom, they're saying they will, they will seize more vehicles. Uh, that brought a lot of conversation, especially. I, 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 I don't, I, I think that, again, as a, as a country, I think we need to reevaluate our approach to things. Mm. I would have thought that if the custom you know, think that a lot of cars or a lot of car dealers have brought in cars in an illegal way, should have given them an opportunity to say, okay, if you have cars that are not properly registered with a custom, mm -hmm. you have the next 20 to 30 days. To do a the process need to. that can allow you almost sit in your house and do a proper documentation mm -hmm. of those cars. And do seamlessly. And, and the, the seamlessly. And then pay for it. And then after 20 days, then you cannot go after them. But you see this guest post This style, fire brigade approach. You know, this fire brigade approach. Mm -hmm. I'm stronging people. You, I mean, if we give amnesty to criminals, I know, you know, right? why can't we just be easy on the people who are doing business? And it doesn't justify any wrongdoing by yeah. those who are selling these cars. I'm just... I'm just but there should opinion. be fair process. There should be a fair process mm. because one of the, uh, you know, one of the problems why things like this happen in Nigeria is because 
you are, there's no assurance of a fair process. I mm. did say that if today the federal government comes up with a fast track method for passports, for collecting your, your, uh, your travel, your Nigerian passport, mm -hmm. people will pay for it. The embassies that work in Nigeria, they do it. For you to travel, you pay um, about, I think you pay about 250 or 300,000 to get your visa in two days for the, from the uh, and British they get embassy. It yes, so they will not come back to you and say they're not giving you or they're giving you, but you're paying that fast track. If you're not ready to pay fast track, you're probably going to have to wait for two to three weeks or sometimes even longer. But in Nigeria, if you want to get your passport, you have to know somebody, you're going Who to pay somebody? money, who's going to pocket the money, and then they will now circumvent the process. I'm like, the revenue that the custom is claiming they've gained since they've closed the border, mm -hmm. it's not because some of those monies were not being paid. It's because they were going, some of them, and the majority of them, were going into the pockets of individuals. So what has happened is that instead of going to the pockets of individuals, it has come, and mm, even the custom, the head of custom is claiming that he is stunned by the figure, except one day they made, I think, 9.4 billion. That is, it's never a happened billion, in the, so the, in the history of, of the customs. So why do you have to have strong people? Just issue the directive. You probably have a database of these people. You know, you bring them have. together. We expect yes, that should have. bring them together and tell them you have 20 days, this is the process, log on to XYZ, mm -hmm. you know, do XYZ, get this thing sorted. If you don't get it sorted, 20 and days from now or, or one month from now, we're coming and we're, this, are, this is going to be the consequences. Mm. It's just, it's, a, and, and we need to improve, I agree with you, we need to improve on the fire brigade approach and then, um, you know, and see that we do things in the right ways. So in the interest of time, to Boston, we'll quickly just go through the Vanguard newspaper and, the, and this day, yes, we'll tell you the, the headlines and then and of course, we encourage you again to grab a copy. Again, the Vanguard newspaper has the sexual harassment force per church as uni uh, lecturer to step down. That's on page 10. And then, of course, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, uh, Nigeria's population, a liability. According to the Emir of Kano, Emir Sanusi, and governors challenge federal government's position on key economic areas, uh, public, private sectors, executive, outline development agenda. Steps to improve manufacturing sector contribution to GDP, Dangote. And Tuboson says, when Dangote talks, we should listen. <laughs> so that's on page 26 and 27. And then somewhere there, you have E-Daily on page 11. Fans react as Tiwa Service shares oh, raunchy photos. OK, that one. Somehow it made the way to the front page. That is on 11. And uh, few people in five states, FCT, owns Nigeria's uh, wealth. And this day, again, two months after Sokoto Zampara, Christina accounts gains of amnesty for bandits. That's on this day. That's the big story there. With two PSB licenses, Telco set to dipping CBN's financial inclusion. We would encourage you to grab copies of this newspaper. Of course, we also have the complete sports. But in the interest of time, please grab a copy for yourself. And to Boston, thank you very much for being with me this thank morning. Thank you for having me. All right. And so that's where we'll wrap it here on Off the Press, the program where we we'll tell you all that is on the headlines of the dailies. I am Amaka Okoye. We'll do this again tomorrow at the same time, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa. Have a good day.